Hi, you two. Welcome to Guided Reading today. We are on our third day of the text of Monkeys and Monsters. OK, day one, we learnt our five new words. Yesterday, day two, we answered literal questions where we had to go back to the text to find the answer. And today we're going to be doing what I think is slightly more challenging, but don't let that panic you. We're going to be doing inference questions. And you might be thinking, what's an inference question? I will go on to that a little bit later. OK, today, then, let me start our lesson. Let me share my screen with you guys. Hopefully now you should see day three here. And here is the front cover of our text we've been using. The Adventures of Sinbad the Sailor, Monkeys and Monsters. OK, and we know it is a fiction text. It's a made up story, a made up narrative. OK. It is not a non-fiction text. Non-fiction text would be like an information book, for example. OK, so let's move on. The first thing I'm going to do is just review our words. Can you tell me through the computer, and I've got amazing hearing so I can hear you, who can tell me what the word swarming means? Tell me through the computer, what does the word swarming mean? You can use the pictures to help you if you're a little bit stuck. Well, well done if you said moving in large numbers, OK? The hornets were swarming through the house, OK? The hornets were moving in large numbers through the house, OK? So well done if you got that. Who can tell me what the word cruel means? OK, if you're cruel, who can tell me what that means? Tell me through the computer now. Some fabulous answers going on there and well done. Nearly everyone I think got that right. It's deliberately causing pain. OK, and it could be maybe physical or maybe hurting our emotions. OK, Mr. Wernick was cruel as he ate the delicious cookie in front of the children. OK, that would be a very cruel thing to do, something I would never do though. OK, our third word that we learned is seized. Who can tell me what seized means? And who can be even better? Who can put the word seized into a sentence for me now? Off you go. Feel free to pause if you need a bit more time. Well done. We know seized means to take control of something. Maybe your sentence was the pirate seized the other ship, OK? Maybe it was the pirate seized control of the treasure, OK? Maybe it was the children seized the classroom. But seized just means to take control of something. Our fourth word was tossed. What does tossed mean? Mm. Well, I'll show you now. Well done if you just said to throw something. In my class, we had someone say the football match started with the coin being tossed. OK, that coin being thrown in the air to toss a coin. OK, but toss to toss the verb just means to throw something. And our last word was stranded. Who can help me with stranded? What does it mean? Tell me through the computer now, please. Well done. Stranded just means left without any way to leave. I read someone say our flight was cancelled, so we were stranded. We were stranded at the airport because our flight was cancelled. So with our new words uh, year two, let's try to use them in our writing. OK, we improve our lexicon. Our lexicon just means our range of vocabulary, all the words we know, but we want to start using our new words in our writing. So Cinderella's stepmother was cruel. OK, the stepmother tossed the keys into the bush and stranded Cinderella at home. We want to start using these words in our writing. Why? That's why we learn them. OK. Anyway, what we're going to do now, though, is play jump in. I know normally we would play control the game uh, as well as jump in in guided reading and in phonics, but 
control the game, as you could probably appreciate, it might be quite difficult to play. So we're going to play jump in again. I'm going to pause, allowing you to say the word, but then I will repeat the word again just to ensure you said it correctly. So hopefully now you should see the book. I'm going to take a sip of the drink. Maybe. Well, hopefully now you can see the book. OK, chapter one of Monkeys and Monsters. Let's start with the day that the wind blew my ship to the evil island of Zub. A gang of monkeys was waiting for us there on the beach. They all had small, cruel eyes and twisted faces. And each one carried a razor sharp dagger in its mouth. Help! screamed the captain. They're coming to get us. Sure enough, the monkeys came swarming onto the ship, seized everyone on board and tossed us all into the sea as we thrashed about helplessly in the waves the monkeys grabbed the oars turned the ship and sped away in it somehow a few of us managed to swim Sure, but now that the monkeys had stolen the ship, we were completely stranded. You should have heard the other passengers groaning and moaning, but I was determined not to give up. So I gazed around the island and very soon spotted a towering castle. Let's go up there, I said to the others. The gates are wide open. Someone inside might help us. We all trudged through the gates into a dark courtyard. There was no one around. An enormous bonfire was blazing away in the middle of the yard with a blackened cauldron steaming on top of it. Suddenly, one of the passengers shrieked in horror. Look, he pointed. Next to the bonfire was a pile of human bones. Ooh, it sounds pretty scary. So we played jump in there. What I'm going to do now, MIT, is share my screen one more time. You're doing so well. Oh, MIT, year two, I do mean. As I said to you earlier, we're going to be doing inference questions today. And don't let this word inference worry you, OK? It's just a style of question that your teachers probably ask you all the time. Let me ask you this question now. How is this girl feeling? How is this girl feeling? Talk to your partner, talk to your hand, talk to your cuddly toy, talk to a parent if they're next to you. How do you think this girl is feeling and why? Pause the video if you need to. 
<laughs> well, well done if you said sad. From looking at her, looking at her hands on her face, her eyes look like they might be tearing a little bit. She's not smiling. From that picture, I can infer, I can work out, and that's all infer kind of really means, I can work out she's feeling sad, okay? I can see she's feeling sad. You inferred how she was feeling. It didn't say this girl is sad under the photo. I haven't told you she is feeling sad. You have worked it out from looking at her face. You have inferred that she is sad, okay? All inferred means really, as I said, is just to work something out, okay? You have inferred, understood from that photo that she's feeling sad. If I said to you, Mr. Wernick slammed the door and stormed out of the room, how do you think Mr. Wernick is feeling if he stormed out the room and slammed the door? Talk to your partners. Well, well done if you said maybe angry, but I never get really get angry, or maybe I was frustrated, okay? Why? Because that's what someone, if you're slamming the door, making a loud bang, you're clearly not very happy. So you probably are frustrated or angry. If you said that, you have inferred how I was feeling, okay? And that's what inference is, working out. So you have got some inference questions today. Let's look at this one together. What word, what word, what word really, sorry, what word tells me the island was not going to be friendly? I said I need to read the question twice, like every question. What word tells me the island was not going to be friendly? Okay, let me underline the keywords. So what word, because it says word, I know it's going to be one word. What word tells me the island was not going to be friendly? Okay, so I've done that, read the question twice, I've underlined the key information. Now I need to use the text and or I need to think. Sometimes in these questions, we need to go back to the text. Sometimes we will not need to go back to the text and you have to give an answer that will make sense. And I'll come on to that a bit later. But let's go back to the text here because it says what word tells me the island was not going to be friendly. Let's start with the day that the wind blew my ship to the evil island of Zerb. Oh, is there a word there that tells me the island isn't going to be friendly? Let's start with the day that the wind blew my ship to the evil island. So the, I think the word evil tells me it's probably not going to be a friendly island. I can infer from the word evil, it might not be a nice place, this island of Zub. It's definitely not going to be friendly. So the word that tells me it's not going to be friendly is evil. OK, so I've used the text there. And I've had a think and I went, actually, yeah, evil tells me it's not going to be friendly. The last step, step four, reread the question. Have you answered it? What word tells me the island was not going to be friendly? Evil. Correct. And I'm, I'm happy with that because it says what word. If it just says word, it means one word. Do not write evil and razor sharp daggers in mouth. The word is, the question is what word tells me the island was not going to be friendly? And that was the adjective evil. How was the captain feeling when he saw the monkeys? How do you know? So you've got to read that question twice. How was the captain feeling when he saw the monkeys? How do you know? So I've done that. So I need to know how was the captain feeling when he saw the monkeys? Then it says, how do you know? Mm. So let me get back to the text. I might need to use the text and I might need to use my own opinion. Let's start with the day that the wind blew my ship to the evil island of Zub. Let me really talk about the captain at the moment. A gang of monkeys was waiting for us there on the beach. Again, I don't really know how the captain is feeling yet. They all had small, cruel eyes and twisted faces, and each one 
carried a razor sharp dagger in its mouth. Help, screamed the captain. They're coming to get us. Oh, so I need to infer. Help, screamed the captain. What, what could I infer about how he's feeling if he's screaming help? I think, mm, well, talk to your partners. How do you think the captain's feeling? And why? How do you know that? Or why do you think that? Pause the video and talk to your partners. Well done. I think because he's shouting help, I think the captain is feeling scared. So I think the captain is feeling scared. I think the captain's feeling scared. But that's not the whole question. So it's how was the captain feeling when he saw the monkeys? How do you know? So I think the captain is feeling scared. Why? Because big elephants can always understand small elephants. Because he screams help or he shouts help. OK, when you when you shout help, it's normally because you have a problem. OK, so I think he's feeling worried. He's feeling scared. Why? Because they're screaming help. Or maybe the captain thinks he's in danger. OK, maybe he's feeling like he's in danger because he's screaming help. OK, but I can infer from the fact the captain is screaming. I can infer how he's feeling. If he's screaming help, he's probably not feeling happy and content. OK, he's clearly worried or thinking he's in danger. OK, you have got some questions here to ask. Like yesterday, there is one with a bit less text and one less question, or there is this one here with a bit more text and an extra question. Good luck, and I'll speak to you all later. Goodbye.